Robert Spencer here for Jihad Watch, a program of the David Horowitz Freedom Center and for the Center for Security Policy, with news about a recurring and strange phenomenon, anti-Muslim hate crimes that turn out to be nothing of the kind. This one was especially egregious and heartbreaking, or at least that's the way it seemed at first. The Huffington Post headlined its story, Islamophobia just drove this boy and his family out of America. The HuffPost story was heartbreaking indeed. It began this way. I'm done with the U.S., Zishan ul Hassan Usmani's wife told him on Friday, seeing her youngest son, just seven years old, walk off the school bus bruised and battered that afternoon outside their apartment building in Cary, North Carolina, was the final straw. The Huffington Post story went on this way. Little Abdulaziz, a first grader and the youngest child of Usmani and Binish Bagwani, was traumatized. He told his parents a classmate had tried to force him to eat food that wasn't halal. When Abdulaziz refused, five of his classmates ganged up on him, making fun of his name. Then they punched him in the face, kicked him in the stomach, and twisted his arm while calling him Muslim again and again, Usmani said. Horrible story, right? There's just one catch. None of this really happened. If Usmani's claim were true, that they keep beating him all the way from school to home on the bus, the boy would have suffered extensive injuries and the bus would have been in an uproar, as anyone who's ever ridden on a school bus knows. Instead, after an investigation, school officials announced no students who were interviewed witnessed an altercation. The bus driver did not witness an altercation. The child did not report to the bus driver any injury. Now, I don't know how far young Abdulaziz lives away from school, but in a photo of him that was released after the supposed attack, the boy does not look anything like the description that his mother gave of him being bruised and battered. He has his arm in a sling, but otherwise looks happily unscathed. He hardly looks like a boy who's just been beaten all the way home from school. No facial marks whatsoever, nary a bruise, no black eye, no fat lip, nothing. The bullies were strikingly ineffectual if, that is, they existed at all, and it looks as if they didn't. So here we go again. Hate crimes are political capital. When real ones don't exist, they must be invented. Hamas-linked care and other Muslims have on many occasions not hesitated to stoop even to fabricating hate crimes, including attacks on mosques. A New Jersey Muslim was recently found guilty of murder that he at first had tried to portray as an Islamophobic at attack. And in 2014 in California, a Muslim was found guilty of killing his wife after first blaming her murder on Islamophobia. This kind of thing happens quite frequently. The New York Daily News recently reported that, quote, a woman who told cops she was called a terrorist and slashed on her cheek in Lower Manhattan on Thursday later admitted she made up the story, police said early Friday. The woman, who wore a headscarf, told authorities a blade-wielding wacko sliced open her face as she left a Manhattan cosmetology school, police sources said. And recently in Britain, the murder of a popular imam was spread far and wide as another Islamophobic hate crime, until his killer was also found to be a Muslim. The Mirror reported that the imam was targeted because he had made efforts to turn youngsters away from radical Islam. According to the Detroit News recently, a Muslim woman, Saida Chadi, was charged with making a false police report after she allegedly fabricated a plot to blow up Dearborn Fordson High School to retaliate against the November terrorist attacks in Paris. Police say Chadi called Dearborn investigators November 19, 2015, six days after Islamic extremists killed 130 people in Paris. Similarly in Britain, a Muslim woman was fined for lying to police about being attacked for wearing a hijab. The 18-year-old student, known only as Miss Chowdhury, said she was violently shoved from behind and punched in the face by a man in Birmingham city centre ten days after the atrocities in the French capital on November 13th. Yet despite school officials' findings in the case of young Abdulaziz Usmani, watch for this one also to show up in the hate crimes list of the Hamas-linked Council on American-Islamic Relations. It's what they do. I'm Robert Spencer.